the digital era, these tools for photographic manipulation are more readily available than ever before. The means of distribution are more available. And the authenticity of these means of distribution are must le much less verifiable. They get out there before the facts. So the final tangible results can now look even more real, more natural. And now you, your generation, is the first generation that has had these tools available since you were born. In my day, you had to cut things out and paste them. Now you do it digitally, seamlessly. So now here's your opportunity to learn and consider what's there. Because you, you have those, had those tools since the beginning. If you look at the simple graph, the number of photographs taken each year, the analog photographs about the turn of the century into this century have really plunged and digital has taken off. So that now we can do things like take traditional historic images and color them. Beautiful. Or we can take representation and goof around with it. Wedding celebration photographs have turned absurd and very absurd. The point is, everywhere you go, people are using these. You're using it right now, or will be after this class. Your families are all combined and cataloged and put together into this electronic net. We used to be a nuclear family, now we're cellular. It's from this expression, perhaps most commonly in selfies. And for those of you graduating, here's your setup. It's be there, and you can take any image you want to of what you want now. You can start to make your own fabrications and your own stories with them. And it's no wonder that this has slipped into the art of photography, too. That we have now combined imagery that is fictional, or hyper-real, or collaged in a dramatic fashion. This particular image of Manhattan actually consists of a thousand digital images. There's a close-up of just some of the detail. Or we've collected off the web thousand sunsets. The point is where we draw that line and what we see. The expression of the real world and the painted world and the art world are combining. You see it in both the prosaic and the dynamic. I always love this picture of the guys hanging a painting. The book, where does it fall now? What does the printed page do? How do we celebrate it? How do we celebrate the way by which we communicate? Our app is a book and it frees you. That's City Lights Bookstore in San Francisco. Indeed, we've always seen it dramatically in the reduction of the regular camera too. And yet it's there. And yet anybody can take a picture. One photographer set it up in a jungle so that a macaque, which is a primate, could trip the shutter. So here we have a self-portrait of a macaque. He took his own picture. Is that his expression of self-identity? Does he have the copyright to this image? All those sort of questions that come about, both important and supercilious, are there. The point is, we can think that film is not dead, or we can join the automated revolution of the era. But it's happening now. And that's sort of the question we wanted to pose to you throughout this whole course, is where is the history taking us? Because you have that profound effect on it. You're part of the audience. You're also part of the image makers. You're both. And it's how you choose to see it, and how you choose to live with it that's critical. 
And that's sort of what we want to see in the end. I would like it that you don't blindly accept an image on its pure imagery basis, that you have some faith and see what's more. Because you are the photographer. This, by the way, is a leaflet for the Photofly Academy if you want to learn how to become a photographer. But it's the you that's important, because you're making the imagery now too. But always remember that it could still at its heart be something simple and basic and fundamental. Treasure your family photographs as well as the photographs of international importance. So for you, finally, a few rules. Number one, the question of objectivity versus subjectivity. William Ivins, a famous curator from the Met, once said the 19th century began by believing that what was reasonable was true, and it wound up believing that what it saw a photograph of was true. Consider that, always, because a photograph can be both objective and subjective. But keep looking and keep seeing. Or as Yogi Berra says, you can observe a lot just by watching. It's important for you to continue to look. It's important for you to always question the context. It's important to say how this came about and what it means and why it's there. And finally, and last, trust your gut. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. I think it's very nice that the best rule for this is the one that belongs to Leroy Jethro Gibbs and NCIS, rule number eight, never take anything for granted. So here I have a solid fact being stated to you by a fictional character. All right, carry that with you anyway. It's important. This is the first photograph. I started the course with this image done by Joseph Nisiphor Nieps. Please go over to HRC and see it one day. The people who own the Nieps estate in France that still exists hired a digital artist to create in the sense of what's real in that image. In other words, the landscape out that image window has completely changed now. Those buildings are largely gone. The tree's gone. But how did it look to Nieps when he, when he first looked out on that image before he took the picture in 1826. They actually have now constructed a digital representation of that real world. Understand, this picture does not exist as a fact. It's a fiction based on a fact. So what is more real? what we can see on the plate when we go down to the HRC, or what can be represented through digital imagery. I don't know, but I want you to always consider it because you're going into the 21st century this way, with these tools, with this history, with this foundation. And I wish you well with the 21st too.